Right, so the Chiron, Chiron, I actually don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, search and rescue belt, pretty standard. Um, just as a setup thing, we have waypoints and stuff. However, you'll notice there's no icon on the map for where we are, and you can't see it. Um, I have it set up as like hardcore, so you have to actually navigate yourself or set up map screens. Um, this is the Chiron. Uh, it's got bilge pumps and that. Ignore these warnings there. They don't know what they're talking about. Yep, pretty standard ship. Uh, you'll notice it costs... Your hair. You start with 20,000 on a career. This costs literally just under that. It costs um, 19,870. It doesn't even have enough money to spawn with fuel. Luckily, you start with some fuel at the start of the game anyway, so it's all golden. Um, to give you an idea of complexity... This is just composite cables. Each one of those has 32 channels of data going through them. This is data. J just look at this. This, all of this, is just for... Right, all this shit is just for this little panel here. <laughs> so that I can have the lights turn on and off independently. Um, and you think that's fucking complex. If I go... Where's my map screen data? Here we go. If I go into here, microcontroller, uh, if I go to the actual logic of it, that looks pretty complex until you realise that each one of these is done, by done with code. And the real killer is this one right here. This took hours <laughs> to do this. It looks like a mess of jumbles, but no, it does actually do something very important. Um, don't know if in the case I broke it. Right, so I suppose all that's left is to actually spawn the damn thing in. Uh, shall we hop on board? I'll take you through the features. Uh, so obviously, with it being social rescue, you've got your nozzle. Uh, power's not on. Allow me to turn the power on. There you go, electricity's now on. Um, moving some social rescue vehicle, you've got obviously your firefighting equipment. I would like to point out while I'm giving this tour, there is currently a boat on fire with two people dying, but hey, we'll ignore that fact. Uh, if I go in here, I go to this instrument panel, I can turn on the exterior lights. There we go. There you go, we've got some nice lights in here. Just saves my flashlights and charge. Um, we've got these tie-off points, so that if we ever come up to a boat that needs rescuing, we can just go slap and slap and hook a boat on. Uh, these are like $200 each, by the way. These are not cheap. I used to have four of these, but, you know. Um, before I get on with any more of it, we actually need to get to some fuel, because it spawns with like 2% fuel in the tank. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So let's grab this. There, turn the pumps on, go over to our refueling area, bam, okay. Um, I've chosen bad weather to do this, but there's very rarely good weather in this game. So if I turn the interior lights on and the spotlights, no, the spotlights are called like a bunch of lag. Got nav lights, you know, standardized, that's actually like a real world standard uh, that I followed because I like following my standards. So here you've got your equipment for saving people, or your benches for saved people, repair equipment. This is for like onboard fires. Um, night vision binoculars is a fucking lifesaver when someone falls overboard. They're like a grand, but hey. Secondary flashlight, you never know. First aid kit for me, just in case. Diving equipment, firefighting equipment. If we go below deck, I don't need my torch because I've got the lights on. This is the fuel tank. It's got 4,125 litres and that is slowly filling. Literally just finished filling, very nice. Uh, this fluid meter here tells this pump that if there's any water in here, drain that shit out. Uh, here's two medium engines. To give you an idea of the power of this craft, one of these engines is supposed to be enough to power a helicopter, and I've got two of them. So it's a pretty damn fast boy. Albeit not a very fuel efficient one. Well, it's... For what it is, it's very fuel efficient, but I could make it a hell of a lot more fuel efficient if I didn't have two engines in it. Uh, right, what else does that show? 
there, there, there was there was something. There was something. Right. So after we've got the helm here, which lets you put the throttle up, start the engine. So things like this took. Uh, okay, I'm somehow stuck. What am I stuck? Oh shit! Fuel. <laughs> I may or may not have forgotten the fact that we have a fuel line connectors. Um, which is rather inopportune. This is why you don't fill up while trying to give a tour. <laughs> oh dear. Let's, let's fix this immediately. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. So, 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 so. Got your firefighting shit. And that uh, pumps off on there. Just pumps off, save some electricity. I was wondering what was pulling me to the side. But yeah, obviously you got this. Um, this has got active stabilisation, right? It's also got automatic gears. So if I prop this down, she so jumps to two, and then jumps to one. Just helps with the fuel efficiency a bit. So things like this RPM take a lot more information than you because. Uh, what that's doing is it's pulling... The only information the engines give you is temperature and rotations per second. So I've then put it through a logic block, convert it to RPM. Same with uh, the fuel and battery. They just come out as a number. I've actually converted them to a percentage by dividing capacity by a total and all that shit. Uh, speed comes out as meters per second. I've converted that to knots. Um, and if I show you something, it's got a stabilization. So while I'm at the helm, it's pretty stable, but if I flick it and then let go, it goes all wobbly. And also, I've got a trim on it where I can just push it right up and get some real speed out of it. And you notice when you put the trim up, it goes a fair bit faster. It's also useful for riding waves, but if I let go, it fucking screws itself over because the gyro turns off. Let's right, just throttle down. Don't need the engines on right now. Can we Let's get that trim fixed. There we go. Right, and here's the pride and joy. This is the bit that took hours. So obviously, uh, when you're here, can't see waypoints. There's no indication of where I am. But under here, behind this panel, I've got GPS locators. So I can bang this on. That's a little OSR logo. I'll, I'll be updating that. Right. That shows where we are. If we zoom out, so give it just level two zoom. That green is this manual input. So we've got people trapped over here. We set the waypoint. Can't see it, but we can go into here and copy the waypoint, which gives us the data, and then that's waypoint on my internal system. So if I start zooming out, I can eventually find a level at which I can see it. Which is apparently taking longer than I thought. There we go. And now I know that I need to go. Maybe straight a wheat west. Follow that. Bing west. Easy. And the brilliant thing I can do is, let's say I want to focus on them instead. I can change the map to focus on them rather than me. Now uh, I would have made this a lot more complex, but obviously this is like a hundred dollars under budget, so I need to be careful. The Mark II, which will be later on in the campaign we'll have like a fully fledged control system where I'll be able to control individual RPS of each engine and everything. Uh, so yeah, that was like two days of work for what? Nine minutes of content. Yes, very good. Very, very good. Wise investment.